Hello everybody. Well, it's 7.30 and I'm here like I promised. So we are going to um, get ourselves ready to make some kyakire, which kyakire means chatter, um, chit chat, small talk, even sometimes gossip. Um, so when people, uh, you know, they're having a little kyakire, they're having a little chat. So isn't that a cooler room instead of a chat room, it'd be a kyakire room. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I know, not that funny. Okay, so these are really simple, wonderful things um, that they make for carnevale, which is, you know, uh, Mardi Gras as we know it here in the States. And um, they are often made all year long, but these are specifically a carnevale tradition. So um, if some of you have your ingredients with you already, get them ready. I'm just checking on my oil and my heat. A little bit of technical difficulty. We're going to use the regular hot oil over here. Okay. It's getting ready. Okay. So anyway, so um, there's three different ways you can make these. You can do it in a bowl. You can do it on the counter. Or you can do it in a mixer. I usually like using the countertop the best, but today, just because I was going to move my <clears throat> hot top here, um, my my uh, little cooktop, um, to do them right in front of you. Um, I was going to do it in the bowl to keep the area clean. So anyway, so some people start with the liquid first and then slowly mix in their dry. And some people start with the dry first and make a well in the middle and mix in. So, you know, everywhere you go in Italy, um, they make these a little different. The recipes are almost all the same. Who's got a little bit of this and who's got a little bit of that. But for the most part, they're very similar. And... It's just a matter of them being called something different. And then, like I said, just real slight variations in recipes. I've tried a bunch of the recipes. They're all good. So don't think one's really better than the other. You might find one that's a little different that you like better for some reason, but um, like some of them call for a little baking powder and most of them, most of the ones I found don't. The egg, I guess, makes enough fluff for it. And then also the alcohol. Well, we'll get to that anyway. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my dry stuff and make kind of a well. So I've got about a, this is a smallish recipe. This will make you, um, a nice, so this dish here, it's my paper plate, um, it soaks up the oil. So I like this. Um, it'll make a nice size dish, uh, for, you know, if you're going to go somewhere. So this is really a smallish recipe. You can double it, triple it. I kind of quadruple it, you know, cause I got a lot of kids, but anyway, um, so we've got our one cup of flour and I'm just going to kind of make a, well, actually I don't even need to make a hole in it yet. Cause I'm going to mix this stuff in. We're just going to put in one spoonful of sugar, just a pinch of salt. And you know, I don't usually put the baking powder in it, but you know, we're going to play with it today. I'm just going to put like a half of a demi toss spoon of baking powder. Okay. So that's my dry stuff. So just going to stir it up a little and then just make a little hole in the middle. And now the fun stuff. I'm going to put in one egg. I'm not going to be dumb and put it straight in because even though I'm usually pretty lucky. And you know, the one blessing of uh, brown shelled eggs is if you drop a piece of eggshell in the flour, you can see it easier. So one egg. And then we're going to put in, just using a household tablespoon, and put in a little bit of white wine. So just kind of like a heaping spoonful of white wine. A little bit of olive oil, same thing. A little spoonful of olive oil. And then I'm going to put in, because some people put in anisette because they like the anise flavor and they use the liquor. Um, I don't have any anisette right now, so I'm using a little bit of anise uh, extract. So I'm just going to put, I'm actually just put a little squeeze in there because I like that flavor. You can put vanilla, you can put whatever flavoring you want, almond, cinnamon, you know, whatever. And then, um, that's it. Some people, I've seen a lot of recipes, because believe me, I research these things. Some people put melted butter in here. The thing is, these are really popular all over Italy, and maybe up north they put butter in it. Down south, we don't tend to use as much butter. Um, we tend to use more oil. Um, I've never used butter in any of the recipes I've tried, so I figure, why? I don't need to they come out great with the oil so just um 
you know, play with it. If you find a recipe and you like it better, then by all means do it. So now I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit until I can run it with my hands. Now usually once you mix this all up and turn it into a dough, you're gonna let it sit for about a half an hour. And you know, this is a nice soft dough, if you can see it here. It's really a nice, uh, nice feel. I love it. It's a completely different feel than like a, uh, a pasta dough or a bread dough. It's just got a different, whole different uh, texture, even though most of the ingredients are almost the same. Now I am gonna put it down on the table here. Just knead it. trying to see if I can actually see the dough on the on the screen but I can so I know you can see it so it's a nice you know sticky it's got a little tack to it but it's not sticky to me at all so a little bit make a nice smooth ball and then what I would do is either cover it in plastic or just stick it when I make a little bat and you'd be surprised how much this little ball makes um, so now I've got this nice little ball and I'm gonna put it in a plastic bag and let it rest for half an hour. I'm not gonna make you sit here for half an hour because I'm doing the magic of TV, so to speak. I made some already. So I have some that's been sitting for half an hour. So we'll do the magic. Ta-da! Okay, put that one in the bag, let that one sit. And now I have this nice ball that's been resting for about a half an hour. All right, somebody's sending me a heart. I can't read from here, but just so you know, I'm saying hello. All right, so now I'm gonna put these things away real quick. Give me just a second. And now I have some space. Okay. Oh, one thing, hold on. Little extra flour just in case I need it. Okay. So now we're just gonna roll this out. I'm gonna put just a little flour on my counter. Flatten it. Turn it over. Okay. We're just gonna roll this out flat. Now, a lot of people do also use a pasta machine for this, and I've got one of those too. In fact, I have three of them. But uh, I really like rolling it out. I like the rolling out of the dough. It's, for me, it's just, I don't know, it's fun. I mean, you know, I love my rolling pin. I've had this rolling pin since before I got married. Now, let's see. About 16, 17 years ago, hold on, I was in Italy and I bought this rolling pin. See? Love this baby. That's what I use when I make my big things of pasta. Had to put it away. Get in trouble with that thing. But anyway, um, rolling pins are fun. These are, you know, good tools, weapons even. You know, it's a really sad thing. A couple of years ago, it was a big thing up here where um, a couple towns over, someone broke into this woman's house while she was there with her two little kids. And, you know, they caught it all on a nanny cam and they, you know, the guy beat the crap out of this woman. Thank goodness didn't hurt the kids. But all I could think of was my back door's right there. My front door's right over there. I can see them both from my kitchen counter where I always am. Nobody'd have a chance at my house. Always got a knife or a rolling pin handy. Pays to be a tough kitchen mama. Okay. I'm gonna roll this up a little bit more. Because 
You want it nice and thin because that makes them nice and crispy. I'm going to come back and look at those messages there in a second for those of you that are talking to me because otherwise I just sit here and I squint and then I look old. I don't want that. All right. Let that sit for a sec. I'm going to get my little cutter out. And then I'm going to take a second and I'm going to check your little messages and see what you got to say to me. If you have any questions that I don't get to while I'm here, you know, I will come back and answer them. All right. I think I've got a nice thing of dough here. Beautiful. Okay. So you can see it's got to be a nice round here. So now I've got my nice little pastry cutter. And all I'm going to do is cut this into strips. So some people cut them into skinny strips. Some cut them a little wider and cut a little slit in the middle. I'm going to show you some designs. So I'm going to cut these kind of a medium size. Some people make them fat. At different times of the year and in different regions, they make them different shapes. Some, in my hometown, they tend to make them just the plain strips. Um, in Calabria, where my husband's family's from, they tend to make them in these twisty bow tie things. Um, everybody does them different. I like doing them a bunch of different ways. So I've just made a bunch of straight pieces, and then I'm going to go straight across here. Then, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to pull one out. So I've got pieces about this big. What I'm going to do now is cut a slice down the middle. Okay. Now some people will just fry them like this and they'll have this hole in the middle. Other people, you could go like this, you take, you go in the middle, you twist it and you've got a twisty. So we're going to just make a bunch of those. I really like those. They're pretty. And they fluff up nice in the oil. Boom. make some plain. So let's twist some of them. So wonder if any of you guys saw my thing in enough time that you were able to get the ingredients out yourself and make them with me together. These really take just a few minutes. Get a nice cast iron pan with some olive oil, um, no not olive oil, sorry, with some nice frying oil. I like to use sunflower oil. Um, it's light, takes high heat. They use it a lot in Italy. So you know I like to try to Stay true to my roots. So I'm just doing a bunch of twisties and then I'm going to leave some just plain strips. So let's see, got a few more here. So this will make a nice platter, make a couple dozen. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, twenty-four. Look at that. Perfect. So two dozen. Oh. And my big giant watchdog is out there keeping the world safe. Let's do another one. Okay. And then some I'm going to do flat and straight. Alrighty. So let me get the oil. Excuse me one second. Actually, what I'm going to do, take a little piece and test the oil. And it's perfect. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to take whoops, all these over here and I'm just gonna bring you with me. So this isn't gonna look all that professional. I was actually gonna do these right here on the countertop, but had a little technical difficulties with my stove. I think I've used it too much. All right, so I'm putting all these on a tray. Okay, hold tight. On 
unplug you. Hello. We're going to go over here to the other side of my kitchen. And here we are. We're going to see. So here's my hot oil pan. Which right now it might even be too hot. I just turned it down. Oops. Forgot the, forgot the tongs. So isn't this fun seeing me up close? Wait a minute. Now that I have you guys up close, let me see. Oh, hi, Mary, Rick, Bree. Oh, hi, Kathy. And Tanny and Beth and Domenico and Alicia and Liz and Jane and Carla and Betty. Good to see you guys. Glad you're here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to just, you're going to watch this. It's going to be fun. So we're going to go in the hot oil. Here's one of my cool twisty ones. Okay, I let this get a little hot kind of fast here. Whoop. And these are cooking really quickly. So, you can see how quick these cook. Let's do some more. I just turned this down. So let's see here. You only really need to do a couple at a time because you don't want them hitting each other. Sometimes I'll do up to five, but these are cooking really quick, so I want to be able to get them out fast. And see how they're bubbling up really quickly? They're cool looking, aren't they? Let's see. Let's see if you can see it from the end there. Neato. So. Get some straight pieces. Some more twisties. Let's get these off of each other. Actually, they're pretty good. They, they get so cooked so quick that they really don't stick to each other. And you see how quick they cook, so it really doesn't take long at all. Um, so it's, it's a nice treat that you can make very quickly. Let's see here. Oops. All right, let's thrust these in. And we've got a whole batch done here all together. Look at this. Yeah, I turned the heat down, you can tell. They're not cooking quite as fast now, which is okay. They're still cooking nice. You get this pretty golden color. But you do want it to be kind of hot because you want them to cook quickly because that way they'll, you know, if they cook too long, if the oil is is too cool, then they soak up more oil, so you don't want them to be too heavy. Oops, I broke it. I knew that was going to happen. It's a long, skinny dude. Okay. And the last couple little pieces. See how they bubble up so nice? Let's see if you can see there. Can you, isn't that neat? So, turn those babies over. And let's see if I can set you guys here near me for a minute. I'm going to be tilted. But anyway, I'm going to finish up these last few. And let's see. Hi, Alida and Tanny again. All right. 
So now the very last thing we need is the powdered sugar. Hold on. I've got it over here. Okay. So, how many of you, have any of you made these before? Anybody? Let me know. Send me a message. I did make this dough, Michelle, but uh, maybe I'll just stay on and make another batch. How's that? Just for fun. Hi, Karen. Okay, so here's our last ones cooking in the frying pan. Taking them out now. Hold on. And we're done. So here's our beautiful plate. We're coming over back to, I'm gonna put you back on your little pedestal here. Hold on everybody. There we go. Okay, so now the only thing we need to do to these babies is powdered sugar them. Oh, of course. There we go. And that's pretty much it. So these, um, well, they're still really hot, so I'm not gonna, not gonna put more in. Let me get some uh, powdered sugar here. Hold on. Hmm. Lost my powdered sugar, but that's okay. I'll get more. Let's get some. So what I'll do is I'll put these out on. Um, oh, there we go on another dish. Make sure they're all powdered up. Okay. And then you have them on a pretty plate here with a doily. And you have a beautiful platter of goodies to take to somebody's house, or just to sit in your table, invite somebody over for coffee and eat them yourself. So let's see if I've got one that's kind of on the bottom that might be cool enough to try. Mm. They're good when they're warm. They're good when they're cooled off. But let me show you these up close. And you can see them, aren't they beautiful? And that took us all of half an hour. So half an hour to make the dough and fry up a whole batch. That's nothing. You know, those people who say they do those half hour cooking shows from start to finish, but you know what? This was really start to finish. No, like, uh, well, no, I take that back. We did let the dough not rest for half an hour, but so all told you would take you an hour, but it's half an hour of work. So not too shabby, huh? So anyway, um, let me go to you guys up close a little bit and see if I can, if anybody had any questions. Ooh, and I look nice. Hi, Carrie. They do look good. Right? Oh, some Polish version. You know, I was reading when I was getting ready to do this. Um, you know, I always research everything. Even though I make these things myself, I research stuff and I always, you know, look up more information about it. Actually, we're going to go over here and sit at the table. That way we can kind of hang out for a few minutes. Um, I research things so that we can, you know, so I'm kind of knowledgeable when I'm sharing stuff with you guys. And I found out that, you know, there's a, actually, if you go online and you go, you look up Kyakere, which is spelled at the top here, um, there's a million different names for this treat. Now, this is what they call it in most of Southern Italy. Um, so I know in Puglia, in Calabria, in Basilicata, in Sicily, Sicilia, if I'm saying the other ones in Italian, I should say that one in Italian too. But anyway, um, 
So, but a lot of the other regions, especially up north, have different names for them. Now, there is something similar that we make in my town called cartelate, and somebody was asking me about that on one of the, the, the Facebook pages, and uh, somebody from Roseto, and in Roseto, Pennsylvania, she said they call them scartelate. So in Italian, it's cartelate, and those are ones that they make with, um, it's the same recipe, but they roll it in longer strips and they pinch it and they roll it up into almost like a little flower. So I'll show you those some other time. But um, there are lots of, like I said, there's lots of names for them throughout Italy. And then there's a lot of different countries who make a similar treat and they all have their name for it. And they're all, you know, pretty much the same. Let's see here if I can not use my... Um, so anyway, so thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you try these out and send me pictures on the page to show me that you made them. This is also gonna be uploaded to YouTube on the regular channel, so it'll be there for reference instead of scrolling down Facebook. Um, and thank you for my glasses there. Thank you for liking my glasses, Carrie. Um, let me talk about glasses. I have need reading glasses and uh, you know, I've got my good ones, but I break glasses and I lose them. So I always keep a whole batch of dollar store glasses. Aren't these cute? They got little, you know, camouflage on the side. <laughs> anyway, um, enjoy these. Make these over these next two weeks for, uh, for Mardi Gras, for Fat Tuesday, for Carnevale. And um, enjoy them. And think of me when you make them. And please, please, please take pictures and send them to me. And, um, and then you can... Uh, be famous on my page. What do you think? Does anybody have any questions? I would love to answer a question about anything. Like my dog chewing in the background. I hope you can't hear him. <laughs> ciao, ciao, Italy. Hey, Carter. Um, so anyway. Oh yeah, that's okay. Everybody, spell check. You guys just pay attention. I'm not Dorian. <laughs> Spell check always wants to make my name Dorian. I'm Dorina. So, you know, teach your phones because that way you can message me more and not have to worry about it. No problem, Tanny. <laughs> anyway, all right, you guys, um, have a great night. And um, like I said, if you have any more questions, then just let me know. And one more time, I'm gonna tell you that if you look this up, there is plenty of recipes out there. They're all similar, they're all good. Um, yes, Beth, this is a traditional Carnivale treat. Oh, Tani, you're Gaetana. Okay, cool. That's, that's an awesome name. You should use that. Anyway, um, what I was going to say is, now I forgot what I was saying, see? Um, uh, okay, anybody want to remind me? Yeah, I love you too, Care. Uh, <laughs> make these, they're a lot of fun, and, um, and let's, uh, you know, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Oh, and I'm going to post the recipe underneath this video, the exact recipe that I used. So that way, um, if you want to do it that way. One of the other things that um, I didn't do this time, but I have done plenty of times, is a lot of recipes call for lemon zest. Um, and I do sometimes put the lemon zest in. It's just what I feel like doing or what I have on me. So, like I said find any recipe, they're good. But it, I wanted to show you more than anything how easy they are to make and how much fun they are. And even rolling them out by hand instead of a pasta machine, look how quick we got them done. So have a great night and I will see you guys soon. Okay, ciao.